sleeper dude here again and if you watched our other video we got this 74 mini winnie winnebago d300 thing it's got a 360 in it it's got a 727 probably got some dana 60 rear axle or whatever it's a 19 foot motorhome and in the last video we bought it we traded it home and got it running and now it doesn't run again but we're gonna do some tune-up stuff to the motor and do like plugs wires oil change cap rotor all that stuff it needs and get it really running good get some casings on this thing and try to get it out on the road again first thing i'm gonna do is figure out why this thing won't start anymore i love this little short hood i thought it had a prop rod the other day but apparently it ran off i don't know what's up now okay i found the prop rod for it i guess we need to put a battery in this thing and see what's up with it now if it wants to start today well, it didn't spark when I hooked that up. That's good. All right, the only thing I've done so far is wiggle some wires around the ignition switch and the ignition box. I'm gonna check again and see if it has any spark. It's not showing any spark to that spark plug. So I've got power on the positive side of the coil. I put my little spark tester right on the actual coil itself. So I'm thinking we're not getting a signal on the ground side. Well, it's getting power, but it doesn't seem to be getting a ground signal on that side. Well, I'm not a Mopar expert. This is the one that was on here. It has five wires. This is the one that was just laying inside there. It looks like it came off the Titanic. I'm going to try it out and see if it works. And uh, I don't know why it doesn't have as many wires. We'll see if that ignition box made any difference. Don't look like it. We've still got our power from our ignition system, our ignition switch to the cool. And the negative side, I'm going to arc it with this. This is a negative ground here. Watch this. See that sparking? So our coil works, which I didn't think it was the coil, but apparently it's not getting a uh, ground signal from the ignition box to run this thing, I guess. So this is the ground signal wire that goes from the ignition box to the coil. So we're gonna ohm out this wire from end to end to see if it's got any breaks in it. If you watch this right here, it should go to zero. So we're good, that wire's good. So the way I did that is I took one, one of these and stuck it here. And the other one is actually on the other end of the wire inside the van. And when you touch them together, it should be zero ohms, which means there's no break in the wire. I'm gonna drain this oil and see what we find in it. It had good oil pressure at first and then it started to lose it as it got hot. But we saw a couple clumps there. Well, I didn't see anything weird come out of here. I've been watching it. So maybe it's just uh, old or an old filter. Let's see if the uh, previous owner torqued this down to a thousand foot pounds or not. Yep, one thousand. Old filter pliers will have something to say about it. Oh, I've already busted a hole in the side of it. It's getting all over my hand. Yeah, good man. You did a good job tightening that one. That's the way you want to do it, where no one else can ever get it off. Maybe I can get some more on me. Be nice. Man, I'm glad they put it on there that time. It really helped me out. Well, it looks like it had a Napa silver filter, which is probably pretty good. I think the Napa's filters are made by Wix. All right, we got our new Wix filter and our Marvel Mystery Oil. I like to put that in motors that have been sitting for a while. I only do it on the first oil change. And uh, I, recently I've been filling the filter up with it because it actually fills up the entire filter a lot quicker than sitting here waiting on oil to drain down. Ralphie wants to put the rest of the marble in it. This thing has a long feeding tube. Wawa wants to pour this in. Maybe she won't spill it. You're doing a great job. We got the 5W40 synthetic diesel oil like I normally I run. I bought a new ignition switch for this thing. 
I really don't think it's the problem, but I just wanted to eliminate this from the situation. I think it's the wiring. So I'm gonna pull the lock cylinder out of this. I got the key in the on position. Push that little button in, your lock cylinder comes out. So you put the key in the same position and then there you go, your lock cylinders in your new ignition switch. Yeah, it looks like I was right. It wasn't the switch, it's the wiring. Dad came through with a spare ignition box. It looks brand new, so we're gonna try it and see if that's our issue. All right, I'm still not showing any spark. Well, I'm just gonna start throwing parts at it now, since I have them sitting here. It looks like the electrode on this rotor is pretty worn down. I've got a new electro or a new rotor and a new cap here. So I'm just gonna throw all the new ignition parts at it and see if that changes anything. I don't expect that this is a problem since it ran before, but I've got them here, I might as well do it. This has got the big spark plug socket size. We got some auto lot plugs to put in it. I'm just doing these one wire at a time so I don't get them mixed up. You don't really wanna pull all the wires off a motor unless you're real good and know everything already. All right, we got all four of these plugs changed and wired. Got our cap and rotor on there. I'm gonna go to the other side now and change them well we're getting the last plug in here so it's it's always good to add a bunch of change points to a problem that way you have no idea what's wrong well all the plugs look very black and wet so they all look equally bad so i guess that's good Well, I have a one last ditch effort here. I'm gonna make a new chassis ground. I just wonder if the chassis is not grounded, which is not grounded in the ignition box good. I know these things have issues with ground. So I'm gonna make a new chassis ground from here down to the battery. It may already have one somewhere else I don't know about, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Looks like no still. Well, I went and dealt with the Fine Sales Associates at O'Reilly's and they got me a brand new five pin uh, ignition module. And I've been told that the grounding is the main issue with these things. So I went ahead and scraped all the paint off here and uh, we're gonna bolt this back up and I don't know, I'm just throwing parts at it now, I guess. I so hope this works. I'm about ready to pull my hair out with this thing. I don't know how something goes from running great to not run at all. get a balance resistor i ohmed it out and it didn't uh, test exactly right according to the specs so me and ralph here are taking the rat and going to get a balance resistor so i took the old balance resistor out and it's ohming out different than the the new one so i don't know let's just see if it works i'm so fed up with this stupid van all right we're gonna try to start this thing again with a new balance resistor <laughs> Put some power steering fluid in this thing. 
very hard to reach. Oh yeah, it likes it. Yum, yum. I'm just gonna dump it till it pours out probably. It's pushing a bunch of cooling out of the overflow. I don't remember it doing that before and it's not even hot yet. But it's already after dark. I've worked myself to death just to get it running again. So I'm gonna go inside. We got some Vainia sausages in there and some RC colas. And I can't wait to crack one open. Well, we got a new baby cat today. It's poor mama died. It's four days old. We're trying to teach you how to drink from a bottle. Oh, we got us some casings. There's some old ones, but they're here casings nonetheless. So these are actually off of a Chevrolet dually. And uh, everybody told me on here on the YouTubes to get some 16 inch hoops because 16 and a half inch casings aren't hard, easy to find when you're on the road broke down. So we, we're gonna try to switch to these if they'll fit. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the cooling system because I'm planning on replacing the uh, radiator hoses if Wrong Auto sent me the right ones and uh, also changing out the thermostat while I'm at it. And it looks like it's not gonna drain hardly at all. I don't know what's stopping this thing up. I wanna, oh, there we go. Must've been some junk in there, huh? All right. I always like to take the cap off so they can breathe. Seems to let them uh, drain better. See, that's called multitasking. That's what Oprah calls it. Let that drain while you're working on this. I know, but everything I've read says they should fit. This thing's got an inch and an eighth socket size. I'm not used to that. Let's see if my bad boy DeWalt cordless will do this. Of course it does. Man, they look funny with one wheel on them. I sure hope these 16-inch wheels quicker these brakes because that looks awful close. So, it doesn't fit. So the Dodge wheel is four and, I don't know, several eighths, like uh, four and 13 sixteenths. And this over here is four and nine sixteenths. So that's a quarter of an inch too small. Everything I read said that they would fit. So this is off of like a mid nineties GMC Chevrolet. And obviously this is a 74 Dodge. So I'm gonna have to figure out what well, I guess to do. I'm gonna have to put these junkers back on until I find something else. I don't know. Well, with my tail tucked, I'm gonna put just the inside wheel back on because I've tried and tried to get that outside one back on the bead after it came off on our first test drive. Well, it looks like the hose is the correct one, maybe as long as it's the right sizes. Even though it has a GM part number. Like it's the right hose, surprisingly. That's got a funny thermostat housing compared to what I'm used to. All right, we're gonna take the Pam Anderson uh, thermostat out of here and we're gonna put the Shania Twain thermostat in there because this one ain't quite as hot. Clean this thermostat uh, gasket area with a I don't have a new thermostat gasket, so it's just going to get Forma gasket. I usually like Forma gasket better than the gasket on a lot of things anyway, especially rougher stuff like this that's pitted. That'll drop the temperature down from 195 to 160 if the radiator and fan can keep up. I always like to run a vehicle cooler than stock. I don't know. It's my thing. I just like it. I got Rocky over here cleaning the fence row out for me. The one thing he can do. So instead of a molded hose, Wrong Auto sent me a flexible hose, but I guess that's what we're gonna work with, if it'll fit. Now, if you people are wondering why I'm replacing all these hoses that aren't even leaking, you know, some of the vehicles on this channel, we ended up buying to get running and resell, but some of them, like the Turbo Coupe, the Falcon, this one right here, 
our intention is to keep this and drive it on long trips as a family. And uh, my wife don't like it when we break down the side of the road too much. Let me go ahead and replace the heater lines too. I end up cutting that one. You gotta be careful with like a heater core and stuff. They are really bad to break when they're old like this. I'm talking about feeble, like like Mamaw's old hip. It don't take much. There we go. Had to cut both of them. You always want to put these hose clamps in a direction that the next guy can't get to them without pulling the chassis off the frame. Get out of there. What are you doing now? Huh? Think mama's got food? Well, I'm gonna try to change the belts on this thing. There's the power steering one. Man, look how thin that thing is. It was squealing pretty bad in the video, even after I put fluid in it. And it's got a fixed fan blade. It don't even have a clutch on it, which I guess is good for cooling. It's all the time running, even when you don't need it. So. There we go. I had to take the top alternator bolt loose and just uh, totally take the alternator loose to get this thing out. It's like it has too small of a belt. Mary and Joseph. So the belt from Wrong Auto is wrong, believe it or not. But I don't know if there's a possibility that this had like a smog pump from the factory or something, but this belt is like uh, two sizes too big. Uh, compared to the one that was on it. So I gotta get another belt. So this is the belt that was on it and this is the belt that Wrong Auto sent us. There's a vast difference there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the gas tank down. I cut the fuel line, took this wire off. We got this one almost all the way down. Oh, it's spinning in this one. Uh, the tank's totally empty, I'm afraid. It has a hole in it right here because the bottom of it's wet. We may have to get a tank for it, it looks like. We'll have to cut this strap bolt. I guess it's just levitating there. I don't know what's holding it. Looks like we got a vent or something. I forgot. There we go. I guess we had another line here that I missed. Ooh, look what's coming out of that. Wow, that's nasty. It seems pretty solid. It's covered up with a bunch of goop. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't want to put fresh gas in that, would you? Man, it's so rusty. I've never seen gas that crown before. It is so terrible. Why would I? I mean, it's just piled up in there. Uh, I'm gonna check and see if we can get a fuel tank for this thing, if it's available. If it is, I think we need to get one. It is terrible. But, funny thing is, this thing has three quarter ton front wheels and dually one ton back wheels. It's really strange. Take half of them. That's not good. The front wheel feels like it's locked up already. This thing has one inch lug nuts in the front. So I guess you gotta have your whole Craftsman toolbox to work on this thing if you have a flat. Different size lug nuts, different size wheels. You just need a spare RV to take with you. Well, it's got some pretty beefy disc front brakes. At least it's got disc brakes. This is for balance. This balances your wheels. Looks like this side was dynamic balance. It had dirt daubers and wasp nest on it. We got some new brake hoses from Wrong Auto, and we're going to see if they're right or not while we're waiting on this gas tank to show up. Uh, we got it ordered. So in. this thing actually, the brakes worked when we got it. They still work. But anybody that's messed with old cars enough, you got brake hoses that look like this. It's going to eventually lock your front brakes up or it's going to blow on you and then you're going to lose all your brakes. And then you're going to be like Miley, you just can't stop. <clears throat> well, that wasn't too tight. So this nut right here is a 3 8 it was, it was pretty stuck, but uh, we got it loose with the vice grips and now I got a 3 8 wrench on it. 
Looks like it's gonna turn off here. A lot of times these brake lines are not fun. I'm talking about sitting through a timeshare, not fun. Just 90 minutes of your time, sir. That's good. Oh, it tastes awful. I had to use the vice grips to break this one loose as well, but at least we didn't have to heat these up this time. This brake hose here looks about as good as the Golden Girls in the bathing suit. Oh, it blew up my nose. You want to bolt this in to your brake caliper first because if you lock this thing in and it's at the wrong angle, you're never going to be able to twist it to get this one. I don't know why, but it's still leaking. I took it apart, put it back together. It seems to have slowed down, but for some reason, this looks like the copper washers or the bolt is leaking. I don't see anything wrong with the washers. I don't know what's up with this. <clears throat> It probably needs front calipers, honestly. The brake pads actually look like they've been replaced really recently. They're super thick. This is something some of you young whippersnappers may not be familiar with. These old automobiles, you gotta grease the ball joints and tie rods and stuff. Turn it back the other way. You gotta hold them there super straight. It'll push out around the sides. There you go. Yeah, back and forth. I don't see anything that looks real loose on it. Here's a closer look at our old hoses. That's pretty rough. It's like them Dollar General girls right there. Rough. Time for a bottle. Yeah, she's getting the hang of this bottle thing. Let's crack the rear brake line loose. Look how long this hose is. It just keeps going. I'm not sure why they made that brake hose that long. So this line broke loose, but the line is stuck inside the nut. So I gotta get that loose or you don't wanna kink these things. That's not fun. All right, I got it to break loose by gently clamping on the brake line. You don't wanna crush the brake line, but just enough to hold it. That way it was don't twist off sometimes. All right, we got the back, the back done. We were pretty lucky, you know, didn't break nothing yet. So we're gonna get the front and then I guess we're gonna start bleeding brakes. Here's a look at the uh, rear brake hose. It's surprising to me that the brakes worked so good on this thing. I'm uh, gonna guess that we're gonna have to eventually put wheel cylinders and calipers on it, but we're gonna try it with this and see if it works or not. Some brake fluid back in it on this master cylinder. It looked like it came off the titanic here trying to crack this back bleeder screw loose these things really stick out there i'm worried it's going to snap off because it doesn't seem to want to come loose even though i've sprayed it with pb blaster oh i think i got it yeah it came loose these all these things are stuck though even if they come loose they're not free they still got to use the wrench to turn them it's not good no buddy no no Nope, you gotta swallow one and then we'll have to give you the hind lick. No, don't for Rocky. Yeah, don't even my finger. Oh, maybe it was better. <laughs> maybe it was better when you had a socket. Can I get to the bleeder screw, please? All right, go, go, you little fat thing, go. Oh, ow, you're heavy. Yeah, get there. <laughs> get there, Rocky. Quit. Leave me alone. <laughs> Quit. <laughs> what? what do you want my belt buckle for? Go. I got this bleeder screw loose. It was actually a 10 millimeter, so I guess what this side or the other side won't have been replaced at some point. Oh, there we go. It broke loose. Okay, well, we got the back bled. Let's move to the front. Oh yeah, we got some air there. Pump it. Oh man, that ain't good. That bolt's tight as can be. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to swap out these little, whatever they are, copper, brass, 
washers and see if I can stop the leak that way. Look at all that brown fluid coming out of that. There we go. Okay, hold it. Well, I think we fixed our leak. Apparently, some of the new washers, I guess that washer's kind of flexed a little bit or something, but I put the old washers back on it and that fixed it. This one just seems a little too tight for me. We're probably going to drive it and see if this brake gets hot and or not. If it gets hot, we're definitely going to have to replace this caliper. I've never actually spun the back ones that I can remember. So we're going to have to jack that up and spin them, see if they're stuck at all. NASCAR train, take one. the footage and that was 12 seconds flat which is a world record for eight lug we're gonna be a lap down if we don't hurry well i'm nasty and dirty and it's vanya 30 so we're going inside well it's another day we're back guys to rc cola <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna get to work <laughs> why is it so shook up I think my wife did this to me. That's what I think happened here. So you might wonder, where'd you get a set of flip-flops with a bottle opener in the bottom of them? Well, one of the viewers, Mac Jenkins, sent these in. Thank you very what much. What better gift could you get than a pair of flip-flops with a bottle opener in the bottom? So I'm gonna be using these. These are my dedicated video flip-flops now. We gotta keep them away from Ellie. So we made a parts run today to O'Reilly's and I got the wiper blades because those are super important to getting one running and a new radiator cap because that one looks like it's, it's like the seal is starting to crack there you go and hopefully we got the right length belts because apparently it doesn't have the correct factory length got some more heater hose and we got a new fuel tank only problem is this seal around the uh filler neck they didn't have it nobody had it called everywhere so i've ordered one of these off the internet so it's probably coming wrong and we're gonna go ahead and put these parts on now yeah. ralphie thinks he can put his first set of wiper blades on by itself push it? yeah you push it until it clips into that hole look like yeah to, is it clicked in uh, i think so good job so this thing actually has half inch heater hose going from the intake up here which is unusual usually everything i mess with is five eighths or three quarter this gal's a little skinnier well i guess i'm gonna go ahead and change this one i hadn't planned on it but i actually was able to get access to the end of that uh hose clamp right there i didn't think i could get to so we can get it replaced too okay we got the power steering belt on I think that was uh, the reason we were hearing it making all that squealing because even with a bunch of fluid in it, it was still squealing. That belt was like half as wide as this new one. We got the alternator belt on up there. And let me show you that bracket from the top. It's not good. So they had a short bolt and it was just put in right here. So I put a long bolt in it and we're going to have to eventually put some sort of bracket from here over to the AC compressor or something. Because you can probably see this alternator is turned this way. And it's not riding on that belt very good at all. I'm going to move on to the fuel line now. And it's supposed to have a metal line from here going down to the pump. And it looks like they've wore a hole through it on this uh, AC compressor. So I think I'm going to cut this back and put in a new rubber hose there. So I'm just going to cut it off right up here. Because uh, I don't see any reason to have that little extra turn that makes it hard to get to. And... Uh, We'll cut it off right here. I just decided to cut this off all the way down here at the pump outlet because what's it matter? I mean, if you're going to have a junction in the line, it might as well be from beginning to end, I guess. So there's one place where it was rubbing against something. I'd rather trust a new rubber line than this thing all put together. It'd be nice to have a brand new metal line, but I ain't got a clue where you would even buy one of them. I guess I could make one, but you know add and stuff all right so i'm going to work on the ignition switch now and the center post on this ignition switch there's actually a diagram on the back of this old switch showing which wire is which so i've got the tester on the center post and you can see it's sending power to the starter solenoid but we're not getting power down here to it so we're going to do a continuity test 
uh, on the wire and see if it has a broke spot in it. I'm gonna pull this out to get access to the back of those wires. And I'm kind of thinking now, is the AC evaporator core just gone? Or is it in here and I don't realize where it's at? So we've got the one end in the center post on the ignition switch plug in. We have the other one on the small wire, solenoid wire on the starter. And we have this set on ohms and that will tell you it should be basically zero if that wire is not broke anywhere, but it's, it's just saying an error code. So we're not getting any sort of connection there. So I'm gonna have to replace this wire. So this orange wire, we cut it and replaced it with a new wire, which goes down and I cut the end off the wire there. So we just left the last, you know, three or four inches of what was there. Let's see if it works. was so tired of having to start that with a screwdriver i probably should have thought about this purchase since the uh the key chain is actually a motel room keychain so they probably broke down this thing didn't want to sleep in ended up getting a motel room i'm going to go ahead and start working on the fuel line that goes from the pump back to the back to the gas tank so i want to replace this short section of uh fuel hose going to the pump right here down to the metal line on the rail found the uh fuel filter under here so we're gonna take it off replace it this back line is crimped on it makes me wonder if it's ever been changed since 1974 since it's a crimped on one get off of there there we go pretty crusty I'm blow out this fuel line from the front to the back try to get as much trash out as we can. We're gonna do the back half of the fuel line now. That wasn't quite as eventful. Let's see what color it is coming out of there. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. That side's a little cleaner. This must be the before side. Yeah, look at all that brown. And this concludes my installation of the fuel filter. Now we'll be able to examine the particulates through the clear sight bowl. I went ahead and put a new fuel hose where it should go to the tank, but since we're waiting on our grommet for the tank, we put this temporary solution on the rear bumper instead. But it should be easy to check our fuel level. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tarpaulin off here to get ready for our test drive. So there's the bottom of the heater core. I'm gonna put water in the top of it and try to flush out the heater core. I'm gonna put this in the heater hoses. This one goes in the top of the water pump. This one comes out the top of the uh, intake manifold. Oh, it's come out the radiator there. Well, it looks pretty clear coming through there. Let's watch it the other direction. Looks like clean water coming out. A few chunks of something. We're probably going to fill it up with water this time, and then after uh, we test drive it and stuff, we'll probably drain it down and put uh, antifreeze in it straight the uh, drain on the radiator i'm letting the water drain out of it i'm gonna hook these heater hoses back up and fill it up with water and we'll crank this thing up and this thing just starts right up and runs so smooth i didn't even have to touch anything after i started i think it ran out of fuel i guess it didn't pick up fuel quick enough from the very back bumper or maybe we have another problem that I don't know about. So I'm gonna put some fuel in the bowl and crank it back up and see if we can get it to prime. Anybody know what these wires are for? I don't know. Tell me in the comments below. It died. What is it? Surely it should have primed by now. Now, this thing ran fine before. 
Is our fuel pump went out on us, apparently? We had a loop to do in our fuel line back here before it went in. So I cut this off just to see if that had anything to do with it, if it had air in that. I don't think that's it, but it's worth a shot. Still nothing. I don't know what's up with this thing. Well, upon further investigation, apparently you have to have the fuel hose hooked up to the line for it to uh, get fuel. It can't just Bluetooth it. when you hook it up. I thought it was Bluetooth. Look at me go. I guess this is the way this thing goes. We're missing the stud. I can come up with that though. I guess it breathes from that corner up there. I'll put the doghouse back over it. I'd hate for a radiator hose to blow off and burn my money maker. Nothing but me and Ralphie in the open road. I can't think of a single thing that can go wrong. Transmission neutral. It didn't seem to be pulling correctly. Yeah, we're low on fluid. Okay, we got now. We put two quarts in. It looks good while it's in neutral now. I want to see if this thing is charging. Yeah, we got 14.2 volts, so we, we should be good there. I sure hope this hood don't blow up, but I still should be able to drive with the hood up. We're gonna shut this thing off. Dad noticed that the wheel was wobbling, so I'm gonna check about this before we get out on the road. Uh, I made a rookie mistake because I've never owned a dually. It has a uh, pin right here, a dowel pin that has to line up with a hole in the wheel. So it's pushing against that dowel pin. All right, we got our wheel fixed, hopefully. We got some Maypop casings. Here we go. <laughs> Must have a bad spot on the flywheel. They don't seem to be hanging up too bad. They don't seem to be hanging up too bad. For the first time in this thing, we don't even know if the transmission shifts or anything. Our temperature gauge doesn't work either. We got a second gear. We got third? Yeah, we got third. Having the correct amount of fluid definitely helps. It's a lot cooler in here with that doghouse and quieter. It don't have the most oil pressure in the world. We got about 20 pounds, but it's just barely idling down through here. Our speedometer gauge works. Man, I feel like a free man right now on this thing. I'm ready to go to Wyoming or Montana or something. Utah's beautiful this time of year. We've hit passing gear going up this hill. I hope them casings hang in there with me. It really uh, is driving pretty good on five wheels. Of course, we ain't got no fuel gauge either. But uh, at least this thing's charging. It's not making any weird noises. Our brakes are working. Let me try them pretty hard here. beautiful out here in Tennessee. Look at all the trees, how pretty they are right now. It's fun driving on these old country roads in an old vehicle like this. I honestly have never drove a motorhome, so it's new to me. I 
I'm kind of scared to take a right hand curve real fast on that Maypop. It just died all of a sudden. We still got plenty of fuel in this thing. I don't know, maybe we just try to start it back up. I don't see anything wrong under here. I don't see anything pouring out or anything. Well, I see a little brake fluid spilled out because I forgot to latch the lid on that. You guys may have seen that already. I mean, it doesn't seem overly hot. Uh, I don't know why it shut off. We'll, we'll try to start it back up. Like that. I'm gonna take this doghouse off where I can look at this carburetor, see what's up there, maybe. I'm gonna hold it wide open. <laughs> get back home before we get stuck out here <laughs> i'm just gonna drive it back home till we get some uh better parts on this thing significantly hotter on my feet i had ralphie get in the very back I don't want him to get burnt by this motor if it blows a hose off or something. Oh, we can see the wheel. A lot noisier. Didn't realize how much a mechanical fan blows. Good thing I got my safety shoes on. On the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Not a bit of smoke. Mopar, no car. I hope this thing makes it back home after this. It's starting to get dark on us too. Listen to this carburetor. I ain't never been this close to a motor <laughs> with a four barrel kicked in. Woo! I took my belly. thing is like super flooding I don't know if the what's going on with the fuel but it's super flooding the motor
I don't know what's up with this fuel system. Is that a needle and seat issue? I don't know. It's like it's uh, spilling over the top of the bowls down the carburetor. I do not want to have a carb fire with this thing next right next to me. We need to put a temp gun on the side of that passenger side foot right there and see what it is. These new flip flops probably saved my life. Man, I'm proud of this casing right here. That brake drum feels a little hot to me after that drive. Our temp gun says it's running about 150 on the top of the radiator right there. 181 there. So, it's not running hot, it don't seem like. Yeah, this back drum's about 160 degrees and the other one's measuring like 80, so I bet we got a wheel cylinder or a brake shoe or something sticking on this and I'll have to tear the back brakes down. Well, hopefully our fuel grommet will come in. We can get the real fuel tank in this thing. Hopefully I can get enough of my envelope to get some hoops and casings for this thing too. Uh, probably gonna have to do some more brake work on it. Probably should tear into that carburetor. Maybe we just got like a leaking needle and seat because I've never been into that carburetor. And uh, that's all the mechanical stuff I can think of off the top of my head. But really probably the next video on this car is gonna be us gutting the interior out and starting to remodel the inside of this. Now we want the outside to stay just like it is. We love it the way it is, but the inside, we got to redo it. The wife says we have to redo it. We can't just sleep in it the way it is. So we're going to be doing that in a future video. Check out our second channel, Sleeper Dude 2. We put short clips on there. Check us out on Instagram at sleeperdude88. I'm starting to figure that out. And then uh, check us out on Facebook at uh, Sleeper Dude as well. Appreciate all the views, guys. There's going to be videos coming soon of other cars. I bought another vehicle actually today. So... You'll find out what it is soon.